take it to the streets. Scare the living daylights out of these privileged white people who have no idea what's going on because it's not affecting them. Let's make it affect them. Let's get it on the news. Let's say what we have with conviction and with passion because this is the most profound participation you can ever engage in. But how do we participate and still remain safe and take care of ourselves and get that self-care? Well, I've got a list. Before you go to any demonstration, sit-in, protest, parade, march, anything like that, there's a few things that you need to have in place in order for that to be a successful and productive experience. First and foremost, do not just show up. Do not just roll out of bed and be like, yeah, I want to be a part of this movement. I'm fired up. I listen to this podcast. I'm out the door. Don't do that. Be smart about this, okay? And don't go alone. Even if you think it's going to be one of the most peaceful, loving, happy, positive events, do not go alone. Always, always, always have someone you're meeting there or someone go with you. And if you can't, chalk that up to the universe saying, not today. Something could happen to you, not today. Number three, never, ever, ever attend a protest under the influence of drugs or alcohol. It's a bad combination for everyone involved, and frankly, you're being selfish, and that's not fair to the people who have grievances who are using this tool to get their message across. Don't do it. Don't be that guy. Number four, it's really important that you know why you are there. Why you are there. Why did you come? Was it, did, did, did this personally affect you somehow? Was there something that triggered you? Something that you saw in the media in the last couple of days as this exposure is getting more and more, the height, we're having more and more exposure to what's been going on all along. We're seeing it. It's, it's in our faces right now. And maybe you saw something and you're like, I have to go. I can't stand, I can't stand by idly anymore. And this is the way I want to participate. But make sure that you know why you were there and make sure that you being there is not about you. It's about you wanting to help and wanting to participate because it's not about you and it's not about one person. It is about all of us collective, collectively saying enough. Stop killing black people. Like just stop. It's, it's time that we just change the way we live. And we start making actual change. But you have to know why you're there. In addition to number five, you need to know who is hosting the demonstration. Who's putting it on? You know, the NAACP, which I highly recommend, if at the bare minimum you don't know what to do with this movement, you don't know how to positively be a force for good and be on the side of right and just, the smallest thing you can do is become a member of the NAACP. I guarantee there's a chapter in your town. And becoming a part of that organization, supporting it, it's $30 a year. You can sign up online. You get a newsletter. You get invited to specific protests that are socially distanced. Some of them have been in cars and long parades. You get informed by a highly accredited group. It's the smallest thing you can do to participate. But know who is putting on the demonstration. Know who is in charge because... As these protests continue, there are different groups that are, that are working to get their message across and different approaches on how that goes. So just be aware. Again, goes back to my number one point. Don't just show up. Number six, make sure you're in functional clothing. If you've never been to a protest, the best thing to imagine is that you're going camping or hiking in a difficult terrain. So that's, you know, boots, That's long pants, light shirt, nothing with a lot of buckles or tassels or nothing you care about for sure. Don't go in your best, you know, dress. Go in garb that's functional and comfortable because some protests can go on for hours and hours and you can be swept up in the participation of it and you're not going to be comfortable in some zip up thing. All right, next, make sure you have an emergency kit. This emergency kit should always include the following milk for your eyes for the when they do the tear gas if that happens at your protest. And if you think, oh, this is just going to be a nice peaceful little protest in the park with the grandmas, do not be fooled to think you will not get tear gassed. Just be prepared. 
So bring milk, bring water, bandanas, hair ties, even if you don't have long hair, they always come in handy, I swear to God. And of course, since we're in the COVID, bring an extra mask, bring your Perel, your hand sanitizer, maybe a little snack if you think it's going to be a long time, and be prepared. Number eight, write your contact information on your arm in ink. Use a marker, use Sharpie, have your contact's name. It could be your partner, your mom, your attorney, whoever. Put it on your arm in ink. Again, even if you think this is going to be like the chillest protest on the planet, you never know. Next, make sure you have an exit buddy. So if you came with somebody and you had a plan to be a part of this demonstration and they leave, make sure that if you're letting them leave and you're not going to go with them, you have somebody you know in the crowd or somebody that you've connected with that you trust to be your exit buddy. Someone who's going to have your six if you need to get out of the situation. Number 10, decide if and how you want to engage with media. Media is all over demonstrations. They love the shock value. So if you get pulled aside during the demonstrations, the sit-ins, the protests, the parades, whatever, and the media wants to ask you why you're there, what's going on, what you've seen, you want to decide before you even go if that's something you want to do. Next, you want to make sure that before you go, the night before, you get a full night's sleep. Do not go when your tank is on empty. Do not go when you're stressed or frustrated or in a negative state. Your state of being will contribute to the group consciousness that's participating in these events. Don't bring your negative ass self to these things. Okay? You bring your hope. You bring your frustration. You bring your anger because you want to get it out. You want to share it with your community. But you also bring that same intensity with your positivity, your hope, your expectation, and what you will personally do to ensure that you're not contributing to the systemic racism in our country right now. Number 12, before you go, decide, are you willing to go to jail? You need to make these decisions before you go out the door because I swear to God, you're not going to know it and all of a sudden you have to make this very important decision. Your life could depend upon it. Do not be fooled into thinking there's a safe protest out there. There is not. And last but not least, make sure to make signs and have whatever message you're trying to put out there that you want to participate in. Make sure that you're displaying that proudly. Okay, we're pumped up, we're fired up, we're ready to go join the cause. Now, once we get there, now we're there. So during the protest, what are some self-care tips? Well, first of all, you need to keep checking in with yourself constantly. Now, I believe in this as a philosophy for self-care all the time. I believe in personal check-in, asking yourself, am I okay with what's happening? You know, is my anxiety being triggered? Where am I at? How am I feeling? Ask yourself the five senses. What are five things I can smell, five things I can touch, five things I can hear, etc., etc. We've gone through that practice. If you're not familiar with it, tap into my previous shows. All the great stuff's in there. But keep checking in with yourself. Number two, make sure to take time while you're at the protest and you're chanting and you're engaging that you reflect on why you're there. You take time in the middle of all of that to reflect, why am I here? What does this mean to me? What am I saying right now? And, and this protest does not have to be with thousands of people burning down buildings. This protest could be you standing on 82nd with a sign that say Black Lives Matter and silence equals violence. That could be your protest. But either way, while you're engaged in that, just reflect on why you're there. Keep coming back to that. And then number three, become hyper aware of your surroundings. And this is why self-care beforehand is so important. Because again, if you show up with your negative state, you're not going to be aware of what's happening around you and shit can go south very quick when it was just seemingly normal moments before. You can be in a relatively quote unquote safe part of the, of the protest and it can go horribly bad. We were down the protest and saw like the cops that were getting ready. So they had their sort of staging area. And they nearly ran over people who were on their way to the protest. They nearly ran them over just pulling out of their little, like, area. So you have to be hyper-focused 
on your surroundings. And in order to do that, you have to be in a peak state. In order to be in a peak state, you have to get self-care. That's how this works. Number four, document any police brutality. So this means you need to have your phone available. And even if it's not happening to you, and even if you do not know the person, get that phone out and record. If there's one thing I think we can all agree on, it's the power of physical evidence. Physical evidence, a video of somebody killing somebody else can start a movement. And your your video captures something that happened to someone else. And while it might not affect you, that could be the difference between that person's medical bills getting taken care of and being destitute for choosing to participate. So always, always, always document any police brutality. And on the flip side, of course, document any vandalism. Because that's real too. That's not what this is about. Breaking stuff and being angry, that makes sense to me. And I don't so much care about the buildings and the damage. But I'm, I'm much more concerned with gathering the evidence to defend the little people. The companies have insurance. They can take care of their own. We are the people and we need to take care of each other. Number five, never, ever, ever run towards danger or like loud noises. You know, if you're in a, if you've ever been to a protest or demonstration, you know where the shit show is. You know where the absolute crazy chaos possibly shot with rubber bullets and hurt forever is. You know where it's at. And if your adrenaline gets going and you get really excited and you think, I want to go see what's happening, put yourself in check and reflect back on, why am I here? Am I here to be a part of the sensationalism of it? Am I here to just see some more police brutality with my own eyes? Because if that's why, then get off the bus. You're in the wrong place. You need to go home and educate yourself and have a direct connection as to why you're participating. And again, I, I, I want to make sure that I'm crystal clear that I value the small personal protests as much as I do the large ones. I just think that if you're by yourself and you're doing this personal protest on the side of the streets or at corners and things like that, all of these can apply. You just need to put them into context for what you're doing. You should always have your phone on you if you're, if you're out by yourself so that you can, again, if someone comes up to you, that physical evidence is so important. So in the same vein of, of number five, don't run towards the danger, is number six, make sure you know to tuck and cover. Okay, if they start shooting tear gas at you or rubber bullets or they start charging you and some have been using tasers, the best thing you can do is potato bug out. Tuck and cover. Just wrap yourself up into a ball and concentrate on your own breathing. Because at that point, you are, you are going to be subject to your environment. There is a point of no return in these situations where the heightened energy can really make people do irrational things. So make sure you're awake, you're aware, and you know what's going on. And if the shit starts to go down, tuck and cover. Do not try and escape capture. If you are detained by one of the riot gear police, if they pull you aside, they put you in zip ties, they're going to put you on a bus with a bunch of other people. Whatever you do, do not run from that situation. You think maybe I can get away, but the reality is your incarceration is just as much of a contributing participation as being at the demonstration itself. Let me say that again. Your incarceration, your potential incarceration for participating in this protest is just as powerful of a participation as being there itself. Even more so. I can get into that later, but that's a whole legal thing. And all I'm saying is it's worth it. Don't try to run. They're probably going to catch you. And you going down as one of the people contained from that demonstration, it goes, it goes into a log somewhere. And it's important that we have those numbers. Number eight. Do not, now hear me, if you do not hear anything else, if you do not take away any other tip I have on protesting, for the love of all that is holy, do not talk to any police at all unless they tell you, one, why you have been arrested. You're shouting in a microphone and it's disturbing the peace. 
Okay, they have to be clear about why they're arresting you. And number two, they have to read you your rights. If they do not read you the Miranda rights, 